Hey, stop. You just found Mind Pump. We're the world's number one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast on its way to becoming the number one podcast, period, in the world. You're going to love today's episode. But real quick, before we get to it, you can win free access to MAPS Prime Pro. This is a wonderful program for correcting muscle imbalances, improving your movement, and getting better mobility. Who doesn't want better mobility? Only idiots don't want better mobility. Here's how you can win that. Leave a comment underneath in the first 24 hours that this episode drops. Help us with the YouTube algorithm. And if we pick your comment as the best comment, you'll get free access to Maps Prime Pro. Also, subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications so you know when we post these videos and you know when we comment under your comment and say things like, hey, congratulations, you won a new program. So do those things. One more thing before we get to the podcast. We are running a sale. Maps Prime, Maps Prime Pro, and the Prime Bundle, all 50% off. Head over to mapsfitnessproducts.com. Make sure you use the code June Prime without a space for that discount. All right, enjoy the podcast. All right, what's going on? Why well, am I in trouble? Yeah, what happened? Well, no, I just uh, this weekend we were hanging out, and um, Katrina is stand, standing behind me, and she's like doing something with Max or whatever like that. And she's and I was scrolling through our thread. No, you don't. Do yes, don't and do this. and right away she's like, "Uh, what was that?" And I'm like, "Oh God." <laughs> So uh, okay, I guess show her. That's Sal, honey. Yeah. Sends half naked photos. To That's me. sends half naked photos to me, so I can give him a, a body fat percentage guess. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. like, I know in his underwear. Right? Yeah, yeah, he could have worn some shorts. He's like, what do you think? How are you I'm, gonna see without? Yeah. What do you mean, clothes how am I gonna see? He's I like, what do you think? You think plenty. this is like seven, eight percent? Where am I at, Adam? Yeah. What like, do they call that here? That V thing? Like that's just you Dude, can't share that with friends. That's <laughs> root, right? No, they call it yeah. gutter. Oh Whoa. my God! Yes. Someone said Whoa. that the other day. I heard That's that for the disgusting. first time. I know. That's what I said. That's and, disgusting. And then it gets chubby. It's the it's the the <laughs> bumper. <laughs> hey, <laughs> speaking of which, yeah. By the way, that's what I heard. I got this lady hammered me on uh, Instagram through DM because of one of my memes. Oh, of course, I got to read this to you because the a twist ensued. And a when the, twist. Oh, bro, when was the this twist, like an M Night Shyamalan oh, uh, dude, reveal. When the twist hit, well, I was, first of all, I felt not how, bad. How all. bad was the meme? Was it like on a scale of your memes being really okay, inappropriate? So it's the picture of there's a guy sitting next to his sex doll. Oh, and he has I his saw hand that on the, yeah, Okay, that's that, kind of that's kind of bad. I appreciate that one. And, though, and it I, says, I mean, I won't read the whole thing because Doug's looking at. He's giving me the look. You know the look we talked about earlier. Yeah, I'm yeah. getting it from Doug right now. <laughs> yeah, but it says it says when a woman gets a vibrator, it's seen as a bit of naughty fun. But when a man orders a two 240 volt Fuckmaster Pro 5000 blow up latex doll <laughs> with a six speed pulsating, and then it goes into a bunch of stuff, right? I love so how he said he wasn't going to read that. Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't read the bad, but anyway, yeah. it's hilarious. Listen, if you go to my Instagram and you see my memes, they're not for kids, duh. Yeah. So, anyway, this lady just like tricks comments on it, and she goes, Seriously? Too bad I told my four boys to follow your account. Disgusting, unbelievable. Uh. So, she sends me that, right? So, I'm uh. like, Damn. So I said, listen, wow. my, my memes are definitely not safe for minors. I'm sorry. Here's the twist. They're not minors. I have a 20-year-old and a 23-year-old. <laughs> oh, get out of here. I'm like, whoa, 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 hold on a second. Whoa. Your adult sons <laughs> on they, my memes? just can't handle that. Yeah. So I said, uh, I said, yeah. I said, if you think you're adult children, I haven't seen way worse than that lady. <laughs> you're out of touch. <laughs> you're way out of touch. And then she keeps going. This is filth. I can't believe it. People would post this. I said, look, is it, it's your parent. It's up to you. Yeah. I said, but uh, your kids are full on adults. Like they're over 18. Bet you they saw way more. And she keeps going Dude, on those forever. kids are maintaining the facade though. Right. Totally. Like, you know, like, oh, ooh. Yeah. like they must be watching movies and be like covering their eyes like, mom, Dude, uh. it's either that or like, I think, I think parents are like in denial of that. Right. Totally. Like when you denial. have, when you have a kid that's yeah. like doing drugs or stealing or something like that, like it's always some story you're like, how did that kid? I mean, even like, uh, we, we just recently had Ian Bick on the show, right? Yeah. We interviewed him and everyone's just like, how did his parents not know like all this money transacting he's buying jet skis and cars like never <laughs> once thought to question him right you know and you listen to him you're like uh yeah so i think parents yeah. just don't want to know from drug she dealers mu she must be a blast to hang out with you i mean you imagine that she's <laughs> toward kids it's not like i posted like dirty pictures or anything like even then it's like shut up they're adults yeah they're That's old enough funny. to go fight in the war for god's sake uh, I, I want a relationship with my kids where of course there's strong moral values and things that we talk about and teach. Yeah. But I also want them comfortable to ask me the hard questions. Cause if they don't ask me, they're going to go to Google or their stupid friends who right. oftentimes will give them bad 
Advice, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Get out of here. And man. if there's comedic value, then there's something. Yeah. Do you remember the way you joked around with your friends when you were in sixth grade, let alone when you were 20? Yeah, I know. For God's yeah. sakes. That was hilarious. That you t- I did not see that coming. Yeah, dude. Yeah. She's like, they're 20 and 24. I'm like, I don't feel bad anymore. Shut <laughs> yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I, I bet they feel lo- a little bad. Should, they're like, you know. You know what I said? Young. I said, I bet your kids love my memes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I bet they're never going to not follow you me. You know what you should do? You Mom. should come out. You should have, uh, you know, have Eli design like a little. Um, like a warning, like a warning label that you all, right before you do your, because you do them like almost all in a row, right? Yeah, so they usually will post like 12. Yeah, so like you should do that, like every time, just to shut everybody up, just to be like, listen, there's a warning right in front of all of them. Yeah. You, you know what? I kind I don't, and here's why. I don't mind people not following me because they don't like, I don't want, those are the kind of people I don't want to follow me anyway, like this lady. Yeah. Like, okay, this it's is- It's a great filter. I'm not for you. Yeah, yeah. that's true. You know what I'm saying? It's no, like it's, those uh, warning labels on- It's like how Vicky thins her herd all the time. You see how she- <laughs> Oh my like, God, <laughs> dude. <laughs> This is why she's Vicky our people. Gets after it, yeah. it's, she's still, it's like the, she's ever, like purging every week. Yeah. <laughs> you ever read uh, warning labels that they have on appliances and stuff, and you read and you think to yourself, "Who are these for?" Like a hair dryer. You ever seen a, a warning label on a hair dryer? You know what it says? Mm-mm. Do not use while taking a shower. Oh. First of all, well, if you're trying to my weekend. if you're trying to dry your kind hair, of, kind of an oxymoron. Doesn't right? make any sense. <laughs> yeah. Number two, like if you know if you know not to use if you know not to use that or if you don't know not to use that in the in the shower, you'll learn. Right. You probably <laughs> don't take a bath while blowing your hair. You yeah, probably right. shouldn't procreate. So yeah. let's just leave it out. Let those people take care of themselves. Well, it's like all the the signs when you go to the airport, and then there was one sign that was like you know no chainsaws, and I was just like, are you serious? Somebody like you know somebody actually brought a chainsaw. Yeah, what happened here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something happened like, here. What? Why? Yeah. Ging, 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 ging. <laughs> like, well, are you serious? Like, you yeah. got a lot of lumbering to do. Yeah. You ever seen signs at the hardware store on the toilets? Please, non-functioning toilets. Please oh, yeah, yeah. You know, somebody was like, "Yeah, uh, they have to make signs for people." It's just that's the nature of the thing. Here's yeah. your sign. Here's your Who's sign. the comedian that used to do that all the time? Here's your uh, sign. One of those blue collar guys. Yeah. My yeah. favorite sign of all time. This was a real sign. It was a plant. Someone took a picture of it, created a meme. It was Planned Parenthood. So, you know, Planned Parenthood. And then it said, for family planning, please use rear entrance. Yeah. 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 That's, that's beautiful. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a good I mean, time. Right so there. many uh, meanings to that. Hey, so we can finally talk about the movies that we watched over the weekend. Yeah. Mm. So let's start with right. uh, Cruella. Amazing. Raving. I mean, I, Adam's been raving about it all week. Did you watch it? No. I Bro, so well made. Yeah, no, I was going to um, because my youngest actually, he watched the whole Dalmatian series and all that. And so this was like one of those he was like wanting to watch. But I'm definitely going to watch it tonight. D- Disney has the best uh, writers by far. They do yeah. such a good job telling a story. And then what they do, and I don't want to spoil anybody, any, this whole thing, but... They take a villain like Cruella, and if you watch Dal- Dalmatians, I mean, she's a terrible person. She yeah. wants to kill these she's dogs and skin and, them. And put, like, make coats out of everything. Terrible. Yeah. But they take her, and through watching this, you actually like her and you empathize so with did her. So, did you see, did nah. you see some of the, did you read any of the comments I got? I got a ton of comments on that. No, post, I didn't right? read So, it. I posted about it saying that you it was. You said it was movie of the year. Yeah, movie of the year changed yeah. my mind, is what I said. And I stand by that. I think it was, I don't think it was just. I dis- you said it's the best movie in the last five years. I said, I can't. No, what I said is, I can't think of a movie that I've seen that's better in the last three to five years. Hmm. So, nothing that comes to mind, at least. Like, nothing that. And yeah. I, and it's I, up there. And I've challenged everybody. I mean, give me a movie. And this, the movie's. Yeah, Jojo mm, Rabbit. Jojo Rabbit was good. 1917. But again, I haven't seen it, so that's. Yeah, not yeah fair. but Cruella's like for everybody. Yeah, exactly. Kids. So, and yeah. that's and that's part of my argument. I think uh, that's. Yeah. So, because some people started naming like these, like. You know, uh, you know, Sundance film horror films and stuff that. Which, by the way, I, I looked them up and I saw. I actually watched one of them. Really, really. You good. watched a horror film? Yeah. Well, it's like a. What do you call like kind of like spoof horror or whatever? What is that? If it's not like real, kind of like. Um, oh, so it's not scary, scary. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I just got excited, dude. Yeah, yeah. No, you know, I'm not into that I stuff. I know. Get but my point is that Get it's not. Blanket. It's not something like the whole. Like, how often do you watch a movie that the entire family can watch and you, as an adult, grown ass man, go, "Wow, yeah, like, that was like Shrek." Well, that I was keep like the te- last one for me. I keep telling you guys to watch Mitchell versus the Machines. I, I watched think- it. Oh, what'd you think? Yeah, it was good. I told you. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, I thought but it was good. Cruella was uh, was another brilliant. level. Another level. It was. Brilliant. I mean the the casting, the the, the cast. So the I love the story, the writing, the acting, the, the soundtrack. Ca- yes. Yeah, mm. the twist. I mean, it had it had everything that you want in a two and a half hour movie too. Never once did I find myself going like, oh, this is kind of slow, or they dr- they drug that on. No, super yeah. good. Oh, now there's the other one that Justin 
crap all over yes. that actually I think was good. It wasn't definitely not great, okay. but it was good. It Let's was talk the, about this army of <laughs> <laughs> yeah army well, of the dead. By the way, some of the some of the people were challenging me right. I, I said, of course. Oh, I, they're tripping. They said army of dead was better. No, they're tripping. And I watched it last night. And I was like, Dude. not. It even, was entertaining, but it's not. Not even in the same universe. No. Well, and again, I went to a movie theater to watch it. Like they they it just came on Netflix, so I could see it as being a, a made for TV flick that's just cheesy and fun and they put a lot of money into it but it just was like come on tell me that love story and all these things it's everything in there is so forced and ridiculous i thought you know i thought it was good because actually i like the characters i like the story i think they did it in a they were making fun of the genre, but in a way that made it entertaining. Yeah. I think it's going to become a, a franchise. Dude, they just piled on every concept of every zombie movie you've ever uh, seen in every zombie yeah. series, and they're like, we're going to put all yeah. that in one thing. I mean, I, I, I enjoyed it, but I also found myself about 40 minutes in yeah. on my phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, it was I like, agree. It was like one of those. I could be watching it yeah. while I was doing something else. Oh, let's not. build this character up. Oh, now he's dead. Yeah. Oh, let's build this character. Oh, now she's dead. Yeah. Oh, let's build this. Now they're dead. Yeah. yeah. All right. Everybody yeah. dies. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> no. yeah. You know what the, I think the problem was for you with that is that you have uh, certain expectations with that kind of movie mm. because you're a fan yeah. of that I kind do, of movie. I do love zombie movies. Yeah. You like zombie. Yeah, you like I'm sci-fi. So when you watch sci-fi and zombie- it's got to make sense, man. And it's got to be yeah. really... Yeah, I'm with you on that. So there was another movie that everybody was... Not everybody. A handful of people were saying. So I, I got challenged with The Army of Dead. I think pff, you lose that argument. Yeah. I watched it. Didn't even come... Yeah, not, not even, even the same universe, no. right? But the other one that I won't watch, which which right away I'll challenge it just because of those reasons, right? It's not a movie I like or that type of genre, nor would I watch it with my family, is The um, Quiet Place. So Quiet Place... What is that? Quiet Place 2 came out. What is Quiet Place? It's another remember. thriller. It's a it's a thriller it? slash horror type of movie. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah, a scary movie. Not oh my hell thing. yeah, I'll watch so that. So I, I heard the first one was incredible, and this is the the second one, and and everyone's or not everyone, multiple people were saying that it was really good. Mm. So I mean, but again, I wouldn't watch it. You couldn't watch that with your kids. Part of why I thought Cruella was so good was that part of that. Mm -hmm. you know, my whole family was there. Like I had I had my my uncle, my cousins. They were all hanging out. We were all watching the movie together. Everybody could enjoy it together. Like. Incredible, right? So good. Now, yeah. what's the mm. name of the actress that played Cruella? Emma Stone? Oh, she did it. Just an exceptional fire. job. Fire, fire. Such a great and job. And who's the guy, the, the 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 kid who was in uh, Cobra Kai, who was uh, what not what was his name? And he's Wolverine, or what was his a character oh, in, in Cobra Kai? He was the guy in with that. the mohawk. Yeah. Oh, Hawk. Yeah, Hawk. He was in the not Hawk. Is it Hawk? Is the, the yeah. was he in Cruella? Yeah. Wait, he, he's he's uh, the guy with the mohawk in the in the in the in yeah yeah. So in Cobra Kai, he mm -hmm. was it. He was in Cruella. He was the uh, you know was it the two her her two sidekicks. No, he wasn't. Yes, he was. Pull up. No, that. one of them oh, was man. the fat dude, and then the that's what I'm talking about. The fat dude. He You're, wasn't Hawk. Yeah, I know it's not Hawk. He's no, it's the wrong no, 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 no. He, I'm he's, the, he's the adult that Stingray remember the adult. Thank you, Doug. Yeah. Stingray or whatever. Remember the oh. adult that came to Cobra Kai? Yeah, I remember that. Guy. And he tried to play with the, you know, the yeah. kids or whatever. That yeah, guy. He was like just a fan. Yeah, they did really good. Okay, so I need suggestions from you guys. Speaking of movies, so uh, Jessica is uh, she's up at Truckee with the baby and her friend, mm -hmm. and so I have a few nights with just my son and my daughter, the older kids. Mm. And I want to watch a movie with my son from that we all liked growing up. And I can't think of any good ones. We've seen The Matrix. We've seen Predator. Have mm -hmm. you seen we've Spaceballs? Seen Fight we've seen Spaceballs. Yeah, Spaceballs yeah. great. Fight Club. Like, what's another good movie I could watch with him that that would be good oh, um, that you think? Mm, Memento, obviously. Is oh, a good yeah, one. that's kind of good. Um, How about A Few Good Men? I don't mm. know. That's a little too serious. Remember the Titans? Eh, it's all right. Stay in the Arnold genre, right? Total Recall? Total Recall would be good. Yeah. And yeah. then the new one. Which one? There's a new Total Recall. There's a new Judge Dredd. There's, I ain't going to watch anything. That, those are great. That, yeah. No. If, if it's a Sylvester Stallone or Is Arnold movie. just your, son, Blade or your Runner, son and your daughter? It'll be just my son. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Dude, okay. Blade Runner. Blade Runner's a good one, huh? Yeah. All right. I'll Get in the sci-fi. Did you ever watch Dune? Of course. I never watched Dune. It wasn't that that one was a bummer because I, I did read a bit of the long book and that was a huge book, but it was like there was just so much plot they tried to cram into one movie. They should have extended it out. Mm. But it's it's coming out. Oh, I got There's a new Dune coming out. By the way, speaking of sci fi stuff, I have a new theory on all these UFO stuff that keeps coming out. <laughs> oh God. So today, as of the recording <laughs> of the podcast. No way we could have avoided this. No way. It's, <laughs> it's gonna, gonna be happen. every podcast from now on because they keep 
they keep putting it out there. There's all this new information and they keep coming out with. Justin and I decided we're going to bring <laughs> yeah. it up every time. We got to keep the, the public informed. Yeah, dude. So, so as of right now, I haven't seen anything yet, but they're supposed to release new information that's classified. So we're supposed to see this flood of UFO information from the government pretty soon, right? So you know, okay, bringing it back to why this is all happening, I heard that so as Trump was leaving office, that was like something he wrote into that whole uh, like recovery package. Yes. Yeah. So that's why that now they're, they have to uh, undisclose all this information because of that policy that he wrote. Yes. Yeah, so uh, here's my theory. My theory is it might not be aliens. What I think it might be <laughs> is a way for the U.S. government to flex on China uh, with our new technology, but they're not going to say this is our technology. They're going to be like, wow, look at these weird things moving so fast you can't track them, and they can go in water, uh, and they seem impervious to radar. Mm -hmm. Isn't that weird? And they're going to be like, we don't know what it is, but it's a way for us to show them, hey, we, listen, guys, we know. Yeah. you don't want to fuck with us because <laughs> we got shit like this. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. That's a little we bit of a inter stretch. It's a little intergalactic bit of stretch. type of technology. Well, think about it. If you're the CIA, well, what if it's more? What if it's? I thought you were going in the direction of it's like a flex that uh, that you, we know, like it's theirs, mm. and we know we're letting you know that we know that we know it's your yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, think about it this way. It, let's say you're running the the military, but you're like the the deep part of the military that really mm. does everything that nobody knows about, right? And you're like. What good is all this crazy ass technology if we can't like show other people what we got, right? Yeah. But you want to show them what time it is. Right. So like, I know what we'll do we'll we'll reveal it, but we'll say we we don't know what it is. Well, wasn't yeah. this the whole thing when they had the stealth bombers yeah. that yeah, so they they were testing them and they had to create mm -hmm. this whole distraction around that. That's mm. right. Mm. And weird information is coming out now about the the virus potentially coming out of that Wuhan lab. Right. Mainstream news, by the way, YouTube. Mainstream. Don't yeah, demonetize it's, this. It's coming back this was mainstream circle. news they were saying that there's that now they're investigating because now they think it may have escaped from a lab and then there's these scientists this is also mainstream but definitely not confirmed right there's these scientists that said that there's definitely fingerprints on the way that the virus looks when they study it that show that it's they're some of it was man-made. Yeah. So saying, this looks like it's not natural. Well, a lot of immunologists that I've listened to on different podcasts have been saying this for a long time. It's just like, again, this was fringe information that was banned. So it was like, you know, we couldn't even think in that direction. Yeah. So I, it's still speculation, but now mainstream media is picking up on it. How do they connect that? I mean, how do you, how do you say Well, because it doesn't just jump species to species like they had portrayed it to. It, so it just doesn't work like from that. From what I read, I'm going to butcher it, but there was something about <clears throat> the structure of the virus where there were like three positively charged uh, particles or something that wouldn't happen in nature. That the only way that it would be there is if you put it there, mm -hmm. you know, if scientists put it there to create this particular virus. Right. Now, this is still all speculation. Uh, currently, the, the consensus is it did come from animals and all that stuff, but they're starting to investigate. But dude, if this comes out to be true, whoa, yeah. that would what be- is it? What's yeah, like, what's going to happen? That's my question. Well, I wanna, that won't be good. What's, what's, what's movie etiquette? When can you make a movie about this? About the, what actually happened? Yeah, what's going on? Or you know, you speculate, you finish what it is, right? Oh, yeah. What is movie etiquette? Hollywood, well, I don't when, know when movie Hollywood... etiquette because remember that one movie with Seth Rogen and and the other guy, North and, Korea, North Korea. Yeah, <laughs> they, yeah, they did it right. Trouble the, for right. That. that was an epic movie by the way. The interview. Somebody needs to have the balls to do it. It was I'd a great movie. That was a good movie. I love that movie. Has your son seen that? That's a good one to watch. No. Oh, that's a good oh, one to watch. Good. And his humor too. Yeah, we did that's watch Super Bad. He thought that was the funniest thing of all time. Super Bad. Yeah, that's another great one. One. He thought that was What'd you guys do this weekend? Did you guys do anything? Did you just barbecue or whatever? What'd you guys do? Yeah, just barbecued, hung out. Um, Courtney and I got a date, which was great. Uh, send the kids off to my parents. So Look at to, you guys. Yeah. You guys are in a, on a roll here with that, yeah. huh? You went from know, like, like uh, get out of here, 12, 12 years of ne <laughs> never doing it to now you guys been doing it like every other weekend now. I like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Just trying to trying to get that going again and, and <laughs> it's like, oh, hey, hey stranger. I hope you know, who are you? Hey, are you getting, you trying to make another baby or what? You see me having a kid? You, you don't see how that we're well, stressed our out new enough. Our sponsors are helping. You know what I'm <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. Yeah. No. No. Hey, can I'm you not send trying to do that. Uh, yeah. I'm not trying to do that, Sal. Uh, yeah. We just did normal stuff. Uh, I, we, uh, there was a lot of people at the beach this weekend, obviously, because. Oh, it's my God. Oh, yeah. It was a nice it's weekend. It's traffic crazy. Forever. It was a nice weekend. Yeah. So we've been avoiding a lot of areas where there's people. 
But uh, yeah, no, just been chill. My my oldest is really into Harry Potter. That's why we didn't watch Cruella because he's going through each one of the series. And so I've been um, on YouTube TV. I can I can record it. And so the next one came out. So we watched Goblet of Fire. Oh, good. And, yeah. So he's Those like are super fun. into it. Right Those now. Those are fun. Now we we were over at my parents' house both days and just having a good time. It cracks me up, dude, because yeah. this is common with a lot of mom. By the way, my mom is the greatest mom ever. I just want to say that before I. Talk about something she does. I mean, I'll check you on that. <laughs> I, I, my mom. Dude, I, I don't know. I did a study on it. Yeah. No, my no. She's amazing. She's a great mom. Love her to death. But she does this thing, and I know it's it's. I don't know if it's cultural or what, but she does this like passive aggressive guilt thing. <laughs> That's not a cultural dude, thing, dude. <laughs> that transcends every mother. That transcends yeah. culture. Oh, why do they do this, dude? Moms do this. Like she'll like I'll show up with the kids. She'll yeah. be like, Oh my God, it's so good to see you. She's like, it's almost like you guys don't even live in the same it's city. Like you don't exist. It's like you guys live and across then you the appear country. Just magically. I'm like, now, thanks, she, mom. Now, when she does it, is she being snarky? Or is she like really throwing a jab? Like, is it? It's like she's trying to be funny. No, or? no, no. Not dude, to be funny. She's having conversation, but she's passively aggressively saying, <laughs> "Do this more often" or some shit. Right? Yeah. I'm just like. Yeah. Oh my God! Oh, I get the same. Treatment. She must have done that like eighty times while we're over there for dinner. Uh, At some point, I started calling her out. Yeah, she would say something like, "Nice passive aggressive thing, Mom. What are you talking about?" And I wouldn't say anything else. And <laughs> I keep dropping it. Like, Come on, man. Oh yeah, stop with that stuff. Yeah, what do they call it? The Catholic guilt. Oh, right? yeah, like, my mom lays it on thick. Yeah, like you'll, like I'll do something for her. You know, like I'll go clean something. She'd be like, "Wow, I haven't seen you do this in a long." Why don't you just say thank you? <laughs> yeah, just say thanks, Mom. Yeah, anyway. good. It's, it is good to see you. I know it's so funny. What'd you do? Uh, I, we, we got together for the family, did barbecue and uh, hung out around the pool and played some ping pong. Um, also got another dad lesson. Didn't I just tell, I, I swear I just told a story recently. You're learning a lot. These I days. know, dude, I'm messing up as a dad lately, bro. I'm not, I'm slipping. It's, it's, I'm slipping right here. <laughs> I, I hate to break it to you. It's <laughs> it, just going it to accelerate. Yeah, it yeah. I, kinda, it I feel like that's what's happening. Like, Admitting like, it here is like your safe space. I mean, I felt like I was like hitting out the park for year one. Year one, like I got this thing. You know what I'm saying? No big deal. All right. Hitting <laughs> yeah. it out. But now I'm like slipping up left and right. So Saturday, Katrina goes to this uh, bridal shower thing over in Pleasanton. So she takes off. So I got Max to myself all day long, right? And we decided to go over his uh, aunt and uncle's house and swim and barbecue, hang out, do the thing, and uh, learned a lesson. I did not uh, did not know this um, how important it is to make sure your child stays hydrated when they're out in the sun all oh, day long. No. Yeah, yeah. So he was out, and you know, uh, you know, you got to remember, right? He doesn't. Uh, you got to make him do those things, right? He's having so much fun playing. Yeah, because you're and, thinking if he's thirsty, he'll drink. Right, right. And because I had it, I had it with me in his snacks, and he'd come run over and he'd sip on it a little bit and he'd do his thing, but. Uh, normally he would have had a lot more water and I'm th and he was out in the sun playing in the water and bucket and stuff like that. Anyways, this is like all day long. Well, then I'm, I'm heading south to head back towards, towards the beach from there, sitting in two and a half hours of traffic, right? So I'm already like, oh my God, I just want to get home. And I'm so lucky this happened when it happened because I just get to my neighborhood I'm, I li and I look in the rear view mirror and he just starts projectile vomiting oh. everywhere. Oh, man. Everywhere in my truck, dude. Brutal. Oh, my oh, God. No. And, and thank God his cousin and his uncle were with me. So they totally, I mean, we pull, I, I come screeching up the driveway, jump out, tr leave the truck running, run around. My my nephew hands him to me like this, and he's like dripping and throw up. Oh. I grab him, strip him down naked right in the driveway, and then him and I go straight up to the shower. And he was, I mean, he was totally fine. Yeah. Like, he was laughing, and we were playing in the shower. Yeah, a little bit of heat stroke, huh? Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. I mean, I, it, I couldn't figure out what it was, but he, all he had right before that was a cracker. So it wasn't the, a food and nothing upset him like that. But. You know what happens with yeah. kids is that they get, this is why you have to like sometimes make sure they eat and drink. Yeah, they get they distracted. Get, they get so caught yeah. up. Yeah. Did you know this happens with kids and uh, pooping? Yes, I was going to say. Yeah. This that's, will happen. You know, the, common one. you know the term anal retentive or, oh, why are you so anal or whatever? Yeah. It comes from this where kids, they don't want to stop playing. So yeah. they'll hold their poop, they'll hold right, their, they don't go to the bathroom and then yeah. it uh, happens. And they create problems like, oh, and then, no. they'll, then they'll poop themselves. I've had instances like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they just yeah. get so into playing and then, you know, an accident Because they're so like, focused no. on having so much fun yeah. Yeah. that they'll forget to do whatever. And that's that, that was, so crazy. That was my dad lesson, right? My dad lesson. Because I, I, it's, you know, shame on me again because I always do, because Katrina's like this. Like whenever she leaves, she's just like, I packed this for you and this, have this at 12 o'clock and have right. this at 3 o'clock yeah. and this. I'm like, ah, oh, you'll be fine. You'll be yeah. fine. Don't <laughs> yeah, worry. 
the systems protocol, like everything's like down to a science. Of course, right? Yeah. It, of course, it's yeah. when I talk we shit. We wing it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I got it. Dad's got yeah. this. Now, He's, now, how does Katrina handle this? When she tells you over and over, obviously don't listen to her. Yeah. Then the kid gets sick. Does she let you, like, she knows you already feel bad? or She, she like, knows She knows that I'm so self-aware that she ain't got to say nothing. Yeah. Yeah. She, know, she knows. That's good. Yeah, it, yeah. You don't she don't need to run. Yeah, she don't need to pile on. Yeah, she don't rub it in. She don't say, you know, you, she, this is why you need to do that because I know she told me that and she and I still that's good yeah I still did anyways and and I also feel so miserable like I feel so bad for him oh, afterwards poor dude I mean he it went everywhere and, and that's the other thing too is I'm sure she knows how stressful that probably was for me what a mess that was mm -hmm. I'm by myself I don't have her so I'm sure that she knows better than to like pile it on me on top that's of that good. too yeah. that's good because another dad need, lesson yeah you feel crappy like that you don't want to yeah. get kicked while you're down especially <laughs> yeah. by the person that you told you <laughs> yeah, yeah you know what I'm saying <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you know um, that episode that we did on why women should bulk oh I'm getting messages mm, about tons that. of DMs on it yeah and some, it, some good comments there was so you know some points that I that I think we should elaborate on one of them is and I struggle with this, and 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 you'll probably know what I'm talking about, Adam. When you're transitioning from one phase of training and nutrition to another, there's a period there where it's hard to transition because I'll give you an example. Like when I'm eating to gain, so I'm eating in a bulk and I'm getting stronger, and I, I'm starting to like the strength. I like the feeling of of feeling you know bigger on my shirts and all that stuff. And then I said, okay, I want to get leaner. The transition part that's hard is letting go of the benefits of the bulk. It's letting go of the strength. But then, and it takes me like a month, but then I get into full acceptance mode where mm -hmm. I don't even care. I don't care yeah. how much weight I'm lifting. It's just about whatever. Yeah. My nutrition then gets super dialed in because what happens before I get that full acceptance mode is I'll try to cut. Yeah, you I'll, teeter back and forth. I'll notice yeah. my strength goes down. Oh, got to bump the, bump the calories, bump the calories. I'm in full acceptance mode now. Now yeah. I'm like straight. The calories are low. Yeah. I could care less about. So what are you what, mainly cutting out? Like if you're if you're reducing it down. Yeah. What's okay. The diet so, look like? so for me, and this is different. So obviously, you just have to cut your calories. You always want to keep it high protein. Carbs and fats are where people will play. For me, I reduce the carbs significantly because it works best with my gut health. Mm -hmm. So I'll do like a keto diet most of the time, and then I'll make sure my protein is high. I've been supplementing a lot with the Paleo Valley bone broth protein mm. because it's the least – if you look at – and we don't work with any companies that do like heavily – like lots of artificial – we don't actually – any protein powder we work with, none of them are flavored artificially. Yeah. But the bone broth protein has nothing in it. There's no flavor. There's nothing. It's literally bone broth protein. Mm. No other ingredient. Yeah. So it's like the easiest for someone like me protein to digest. So I can literally, if I'm off 60 grams of protein, I can have a 60 gram And I think shape. that's the, the important point to make when you're talking about that protein. Because we, we know what the research says about like the best protein. Yeah, whey protein is just the most the best amino acid, probably the whole, whole deal. Mm -hmm. I can't have it. You know, and for me, gut health, my gut is sensitive. Yeah. The bone broth, I could have that all day long. It's and it's just because it's so minimally processed. It's well, got watch out in for it. me doubling up on commercials here, but um, <laughs> I, I actually have been struggling because my I had that like work done on my teeth um, and chewing. I've, I've been trying to reduce calories as well. I've been eating a lot more meat uh, and, and upping my protein and, and reducing my carbohydrates. And so it's been it's been rough. Like I I, chew, I can only chew for so long before like, I get really sore. Uh, How long does that last? How long is it going to uh, be? It's just going to be like a week of 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 soreness. And and you know like I, I've been pretty much I've been pretty much avoiding my left side in general because I I don't have a tooth there right now. So what are you drinking all your calories? So I'm just drinking calories. And, uh, and so I've been doing the the Legion protein, the whey protein, and. I was a little nervous about it because I'm doing protein and I know what that looks like from back when I was younger, where I was like really heavy on the whey oh, protein. Oh, hot farts. Dude, dude, I thought I was going to blow out the entire house. Like I was, <laughs> I was worried. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like warning everybody. I didn't have that. Like it, it, it didn't make me as, as gassy and volatile. Like, you know, he day. includes enzymes uh, in the protein. Oh, he does. Oh, okay. Yeah. So know. Legion's oh, way. I, so I've gotten a lot. So I can't have dairy. So I've never, I've tasted it just to see what the flavor is, but I can't take uh, whey. But I get a lot of DMs about Legion way in comparison to other way, and they say the same thing. It yeah. doesn't give them the protein. Part. I was really surprised because that was a big issue for me. I have noticed that, but I didn't even think twice to check why. I yeah. just thought it was oh something that lined up in my diet that day. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't know. That. Yeah. Now, do you uh, do you like to 
blend and mix your own, or do you just choose like one of his flavors? Nacho like, cheese. Like, just, <laughs> nacho, yeah. like his cookies, his cookies and cream is bomb. But do you do like a, that, like a like one of his flavored yeah, ones? Yeah, I do the it? chocolate peanut butter with ice, and I'll blend that okay. together. Or if I add milk, I'll, I'll do that. Maybe some peanut butter if I'm feeling extra spicy. But, <laughs> but that's about it. You look yeah. like you've come down in weight. Is your is the scale changed at all? It has, yeah, a little bit. I mean, obviously, I don't pay attention to that too much like you guys, but I just make sure that <laughs> don't, don't let my me shirts fit hey, better. Don't lump me in with this guy right now, sending <laughs> half nakeds to each other, hey, something like that. Hey, I started. No, no, I'm waiting. <laughs> Hold you on keep saying you look good naked yeah. and all this. I'm like, yeah. I just say it. Wait I mean, a minute. We're getting hey, it from I Sal. say I it, but I ain't got to prove it to you guys. Wait a minute. <laughs> Hold on a second. Didn't you send us a picture that, of you flexing your abs? You posted it on your story and you send it to us? No, he read uh, uh, share it to the world, not just us. Yeah, that was on my story. Hey, this is to let him know. <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't. They didn't know before. Now yeah, they. You gotta let them know. Now they. Hey, know, now you, they know. You know what's cool about this? We've always been like, you know, we work out for our health. We enjoy it. We're not trying to do this crazy like visual fitness influence. I hate that. We all hate that, right? You gotta Ugh. look shredded all the time, whatever. Yeah. But here's the deal, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody else. Uh, these over forty year old guys are coming for you. We're gonna show you <laughs> what we can do. It's time. Yeah. It's time. <laughs> It's happening, yeah. you know, because I think after a certain point, everybody wants to see what you know what can happen. You're about to see what can happen. That's it, kids. You got how many we weeks? Still got it in us. How many weeks do you guys have until uh, Hawaii time? Uh, five under five, six, yeah. something six, like six, something like that. Yeah. yeah. On a serious note, though, I I actually, I mean, I wouldn't get any leaner than you already are. I like the way you look. You know, and I mean mm. that with no homo. You know, yeah, I, yeah, I think yeah. you look. I think oh, you. Well, look. I want to keep going. I want to get the homo part. <laughs> I get a little bit of homo yeah. in there. Yeah. No, I do. I think that like right now, because you know how it is when you get. Like shredded, shredded. I never liked the shredded, shredded look that I get on I stage. Yeah. It looks cool with the lighting and when you've manipulated water and everything like that, but it's yeah. not. Yeah, but I don't see. I can't. I can't stop. I like the six pack, but I like my men. You know, nice and <laughs> Whoa. Like, like, like you know, not not too much shredded. It to doesn't get so uncomfortable when you have to get some, <laughs> sustain, some substance there. No, yeah. I can't stop, dude. Now I'm I'm so in that mode. Oh, I just yeah. want to see how far I could go. Now, where is mm. your weight hanging out right now? Two oh. Five, oh, so you're, you're coming down then. 205 to two like oh to 207 depending on what's going on so I'll, I'll actually have a little bit of carbs once a week um, but that's about it and that's when the water my water weight will go up wow you're pretty heavy for how lean you look right now because normally you're in the 190s when you look yeah. that lean yeah oh. you know, I'm telling you dude it's all dependent on this is for me now my gut health if my gut health is good, I, it's great. If it's not, that's all I have to deal well, with. Well, so what's a mistake you normally or would make in the past right now where you're at? When I'm cutting, it's actually easy because I restrict so right, much. Right, anyway. right. It's when I start to try to gain, mm. I get a little carried away. And what happens with me, and I'm sure people, some people can relate, is I'll push it a little bit and then I'm okay the next day. So I'm like, oh, cool. Yeah. I can push it again. Mm -hmm. And then I'll do it. I'll be like, eh. I think I'm okay. You know, that's such and then a, I go too far. It's such a good point. You just brought that up because it. Uh, you, I don't, and I don't know how to explain this or probably articulate it as well as you can. But there's something to be said about that, right? There's a lot of people that are in denial when they have like an autoimmune issue yeah. because mm -hmm. you restrict from it for a while, then they reintroduce it and they don't see an initial reaction. And the so reaction is usually not instant. That's no, why. yeah. It, it, and what, what I mean by instant, too, even the next day, sometimes you do it once or twice, and you think, oh, it's all good. Yeah, I'm cured. Yeah, that's right. I and know. then you start to let it. You let it back in the diet more regular then you start pop and then you think it's not that because you're like well i've been eating the sugar and yep. the gluten for the last three weeks and i yep. haven't had any problems all of a sudden it's bad now yep so it's important to let people know that like when you've done like an elimination diet or you've done mm -hmm. keto you've done something to get rid of this stuff and you think you have an offender that's causing some sort of inflammation or totally. gut issues and just because you introduce it one time and you don't get a, a quick reaction, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's not the offender because it sometimes it takes a little bit of buildup before you start to notice. Totally, that. and it's it, it's so hard to connect because it takes time. Yeah, and so you'll talk to clients about this, and they'll be like, "But I've been doing this for the last few weeks, or what the hell's going on?" And then here's the problem with me, at least. Once I go and full blown, oh crap, I got to deal with my gut health now. It takes me like a month or two months to get back to normal. So I'd like to say I learned my lesson, but because I repeat this cycle, uh, yeah. you know, all the time, it's probably a lesson I'll have to continue to learn <laughs> over and over again. Anyway, pain in the ass. Hey, you guys want to hear some science? Ah. Science time. Science we need time. A, we need a science song. I'm going to pull it up. I'm going to pull up this article for you guys real quick. Yeah. So do you guys know why women have orgasms? The mm. scientific reason? Wow. Great science um, today. Yeah. 
It's good science right yeah. here. I mean, enlighten I've, us. I've figured it out. Just as I don't know. Yeah, I've never yeah, seen one. Yeah, I don't yeah. know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> I'm still searching. <laughs> the elusive female orgasm. So it's a myth. It's actually a big question in science because functionally speaking, they don't see it having any like biological use, right? For a man, obvious, right? You have to ejaculate in order to to impregnate the person you're having sex with. Women can get pregnant without orgasm. So like, okay, we could see potentially the value socially because we're such social creatures, so it helps people bond. So there's value there, but like biologically, what's the value? So there's been lots of theories. One theory was with that when a woman orgasms, the contractions that go on in her, you know, vagina and vulva or whatever, suck up the <laughs> sorry, yeah, I did the hand yeah, signal. Yeah, I like this. <laughs> yeah, my bad. Suck up the semen incur and it increases the chances of pregnancy, but that's been debated. So there's a new theory uh, that's out, which is kind of interesting. So when women orgasm, there's two hormones that get released, oxytocin and prolactin. In females of wild placental mammals, okay, so animals that are similar to us, this type of hormonal discharge actively causes ovulation to begin. Without it, pregnancy is not possible. So in these other animals, if the female doesn't orgasm, she doesn't ovulate not going to get pregnant. They think that's the way humans started. So we started that way. It was necessary for pregnancy. Then as we evolved, wasn't didn't wasn't necessary anymore, but it hung around because it's cool because oh, it's something that, you know, yeah. still helped us bond or whatever. Wow. Kind of interesting, right? I do. Feel like I like how such these a strange boner right now. I know. But again, <laughs> yeah. weird boner. Science, you know, does it to me every time. Same here, dude. Yeah. Same here. It's strange. Now I know Adam, I'm talking science. It's I'm not gonna debate it. Faith. Well, let me tell you, you <laughs> hey, you started it off right. You started off with it. This is what this is the theory. Oh, I didn't come yeah. up with yeah. the yeah, yeah, you didn't state it like a fact. Oh my did you see I had to go back and forth with some numb nuts too? Like there's always gotta be somebody who is like I a, love the word numb nuts. By yeah, the way. it's like a some. It's always one of nuts have no feelings. It's one of Sal's yeah. people, right? That like worship the ground he walks on, and everything he says must be <laughs> the up. truth. Yeah. You know what I'm saying they have to come I to his sign copy of your jersey. I, actually, I don't really like yeah. the way that you. That's com, how, you that's compare. how people like me talk. Yeah, that's exactly how they talk. <laughs> they, only your fans yeah. talk that way. Sal's always right. Okay, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. interrupt. You're, 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 what you're trying to draw oh with with faith and with science. Welcome to my pub. We make fun of our fans. Oh God, that's what happened. Um, no, we were just going back we and forth. That I mean, he was just extending your argument with me, and I said, "Listen, I'm not, I'm not denying that. All I'm saying is that we do when we talk about science a lot of the time." And I, I was just pointing that out to Sal. No, you, you actually made your point very well. Well, I thought so yeah, too, right? I thought we agreed at the end of it, yeah, right? Like it wasn't that I'm not saying that it's not necessarily true. It's just we do. I think. Don't you think that's true when we talk a lot of times? Even ourselves, we're guilty of this talking yeah. about science around working out, and it never, or almost never, is it ever even duplicated, yep. right? So it's like. It's really just a yeah. really good hypothesis. Now, I think that that's a good reason that you should probably follow that a lot of times yeah. because if it's it's been if it's well, everybody subscribes to a belief system and ideologies. It's just like the, a lot of times it's not as obvious because it's not structured in a religious uh, setting or. It, it, you could see this in all kinds of different versions of it, you know, even with politics. Like, there's just all kinds of ideologies totally. out there that well, people will just subscribe to without actually doing the work of tracing that thought all the way it's, down. It's dangerous, yes. actually, to identify so strongly. That's right. You. That's what bothers me. Like, this this guy going back and forth, I'm like, you're so funny. You sound just like the people that are dogmat religiously dogmatic. Mm -hmm. Just as bad. You're yeah. arguing this point back and forth. It's like... I'm not. I'm not like a science denier. Yeah. I mean, yeah. come on, guy. Let's look at what I do. I like, I like to apply it was the Socratic method, right? Mm. So that's that's where you test your your ideas and, and make sure that people question it and, and put it up for scrutiny. And if it tests that scrutiny, then you have a valid idea. So there's right. an actual. I can't remember the term for it. Maybe Doug can figure it out. But there's this term for when you start to learn about a subject. Initially, when you start to learn some information. You have this super high level of confidence. Like, oh, I know. Yeah. yeah. It's like medical school. In fact, I trained a lot of doctors and surgeons at one point, and they would tell me this is what they went through when they is, would go is to this medical where, school. Is this where the, the the term God complex comes from? Um, no, it's different. That's oh. different. But but what they would tell me is when they would first go to medical school and start learning stuff, they'd have this tremendous amount of confidence at first. But then the more they learned, 
And as you start to become more knowledgeable about a subject, you actually start to realize there's a lot we don't know. Right. And it's this it's this curve. Just like what's the who's the who's the Stoic that's famous for saying that? Right. I know that I am wise because I know that I know nothing. Is that Marcus Aurelius? I don't know who. I don't know which Stoic said it, but I, I mean, the, I mean, there you go. Right Seneca. There. Right. I don't. Remember. I'm just naming Stoics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is how you sound smart at parties, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> it, must, it was it was, it was a sentence. Just named yeah. a few things yeah. that are in that category. DailyStoic. No, but do you guys remember? Go ahead, Doug. You were gonna say something. Something called the Dunning Kruger. There you Dunning go, Dunning Kruger, Kruger effect. effect. Uh, yeah, thank you. You can exp- put that up. Right. Uh, Explain uh, that again, or read it to us. What's the definition? It's a cognitive bias that states that the less we know, the more confident we are. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, it's true. Yeah. Now take it back to when we first became trainers. Remember your first certification? Yeah. Boom! I know everything. Oh, oh yeah. yeah! I'll tell you exactly what you need to do. Uh, Here's everybody like, should train one foot. Then after five <laughs> five to ten years of being a trainer, like oh yeah, it's so much individual variance. Actually, we're gonna have to see yeah. what's going on and whatever. The same exact curve. You're right. You need to be. I think you need to have that confidence, and then I think get put on your ass, mm-hmm. and then that's when you go. You're a little more open minded going forward. After that's like, well, you know, I felt pretty strongly before about something. I'm gonna I'm gonna tread lightly now when I talk about this instead of always talking in certainties. Yeah. Dude, that's what got me. And this is my own personal. Okay, so I, I'm sure people are like, oh, this is whatever this is my own personal uh story or whatever uh, voyage or whatever the word you want to call i was a, a staunch atheist for a long time and then i realized that because i was a staunch atheist because i remember thinking these people don't know what what's out there mean, by the way? staunch is like this is what i like solid like that's staunch. it you cannot break. sounds stinky i've never heard it used other than staunch atheist that's not why i was oh really yeah. yeah so i was just like solid in that position and i would see people you know yeah talk about their religion or spiritual practice and I remember thinking you have no idea you know no one knows and I remember I was debating someone online this is how I learned by the way which annoys the shit of everybody that knows me because I argue I argue everything somebody comes up the point I argue with them Jessica sometimes gets so annoyed with me she's like why do you argue everything this is how I learn so I'm online debating this really smart person who's religious and they were very intelligent so I had this great debate and I remember telling them how do you know? You don't know any of that for sure. And he says, neither do you. Right. I remember thinking like, that's kind of true. I don't know for sure. <laughs> Burn. So <laughs> that's kind of, I'm a little hypocritical here. And it actually led me down the path of being like, okay, maybe I'm going to be a little bit more open-minded. Right. But I think if people took that approach, we'd probably be a little bit better off yeah, yeah. For you know, sure. with certain things. Hey, real quick, before we get to the questions on this podcast, do you like free stuff, especially if it's valuable? Of course you do. Head over to mindpumpfree.com. Check out all the free things that we put together to give away to you beautiful people. Mindpumpfree.com. All right, enjoy the rest of the podcast. First question is from Bobby for Fit. What are some definitive ways to know that I'm gaining muscle and not fat? Oh, this is a good question. This could be strength. This could be very challenging yeah. when you're, especially if you're somebody that has is challenged with going on a bulk. Right? It's like, what if I'm gaining body fat? Adam said it. Strength. Here's the thing with strength. I love strength because it's objective. You're moving more weight. However, you can also get stronger simply because your calories are up. That's right. And sometimes higher body fat percentage contributes to more strength. I notice for myself, my squats go up when I'm a little when I'm a little heavier with yeah. just body fat as yeah. well. So it's not perfect, but strength number one, number two, body fat tests. Body fat tests are the most accurate. They're not 100 percent accurate. There's nothing that's 100 percent accurate, but they're the most accurate way of seeing if you've gained or lost lean body mass or fat mass. I, I also think too. Um Visually, I mean, I feel like you you look like let's say you you've been training and you've been dieting with the scales not really moving much. This is why I like to t- take a photo like every week or every other week. So yeah, I but have, there's a strategy there, right? Yeah. You take it at the same time. That's right. Every day, yeah. And that, so so it'd be you know Friday morning before I eat, always the same time. And it's it, all it's there is because mentally you mess with yourself if you look in the mirror every mm-hmm. day. You need to have something to, that you can look and you can like compare to, right? So if I look at a photo of me on Friday and then three weeks later, and let's say the scale is not moved. I've been training my ass off. Maybe I haven't seen much strength gains. I know I've been dieting. I'm following what I'm supposed to. I'm not sure. And then I look at a picture and I'm like, oh, okay. I definitely look better this Friday mm-hmm. than I did two Fridays ago. I'm probably heading in the right direction. Yeah, and I like what you said about a week or two weeks. Yeah. Here's the problem I've seen with people doing this. They'll take an everyday picture. Yeah, that's funny. And there's, especially if you're starting out- Too much fluctuation. Yeah, especially yeah. if you start out lean. This used to screw me up. Yeah. Because I would start out lean and I'd say, okay, I'm going to gain now. 
And initially, when you gain, you're eating more, you hold more water. And I'd be like, oh my gosh, I'm gaining body fat. But yeah. it wasn't. It was just a little bit and of water. Body fat's a little difficult, though, because the, the most accessible one, you're going to get those those scales where it's like they do oh, yeah, yeah the, the bioelectric impedance. But really, the, the most accurate you have, your water displacement, your air displacement, so yeah. like your your bod pod or the, yeah. the, the dunk tank, which the, is the great. The da 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 You just <laughs> the, the dunk tank. That's when Justin goes in there. This is a dunk. Yeah. dunking. Um, <laughs> the dunk a dunk tank. <laughs> Watch out. Exactly this, all the water's out of the yeah. tank. We yeah. put his butt in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You got to schedule it. I mean, like once a month really is, I think it's, that's plenty. No, it is. Yeah. So it, it depends on the person, right? So um, if I have somebody who is like, overly critical or yeah. hung up like I'll, I'll stretch the time out right yeah. if you have a better relationship with this I, I can every week i'll do it like so i for myself go every week if i have a client who is like really really tough on themselves negative or they don't feel like they see that i might stretch them as much as four weeks so yes stretch it, especially long. if they're not like the leaner you are, the more frequent you probably want to test, right? So if you're starting out, yeah, if you're getting towards the end, yeah, like with Adam, for example, when he when he used to compete, right, you'd hit the stage at two percent or three yeah. percent body fat. You would want to after you when you're gaining from there, you probably want to check a little faster because that's right. You gain a percent or two fast, yeah. That lean. If you're at fifteen percent, your guy, you know, every once every three weeks. I like, here's a deal. The dunk can be kind of difficult because you have to pay. You got to go somewhere or have them come to your and house. There's a technique to it too. There is. I like calipers because calipers can be relatively consistent. Here's the challenge. Have the same person test you each time, yeah. do it the same day, the same time, and then don't freak out over a half percent difference because user error, you know, when they're pinching right. your skin or whatever. How many coaches you think, though, have manipulated that just a bit so it made their client sure. feel better? Oh, sure. come on, bro. Yeah, that's just it. That's and why I kind of throw that one out. Not, not, I know. And not only that, that's but such a good point. Dude, also, that all time. also water, too, like because they're pinching. So there's there a lot of water gets in there. With, if you if you had like a bunch of water the day before, or had a bunch of sodium, you might be holding more water, yep. which will throw that off a little bit. That's so. why you look at trends and give yourself some yeah. time. Yeah. But if you combine Pictures, body fat test, and strength. Yeah. I think the combination of those three metrics yeah. are probably give you a good perspective. And, be, give you the best and the, I think the main thing to take from this too is you got to be patient. People expect like totally. this. You know, oh, I've been doing this. I'm like, you've been doing it for three weeks. What did you think? You, <laughs> yeah, you, you no. What the fuck did yeah, you think well. it was going to look like in three weeks? And and you don't want drastic change in three weeks time. It should be very slow and gradual if you want it to be long term success, right? Otherwise, it's going to happen really quick. It's going to come back on really quick too. Next question is from Fulvio the Castle. How effective is strength training to improve bone density? The most effective. Isn't the yeah. only way, really? The mo there's nothing. Yeah. There's nothing that even comes close to resistance training or strength training right. for increasing bone density. Now, I know people will think do things like take more vitamin D, take mm. more calcium, take magnesium. Here's the thing with those. Now, first off, if those nutrients are low and you're deficient, taking them will improve bone density, but that's totally different. If your nutrient intake of key nutrients is normal – supplementing is not going to do you a damn thing. Also, if you don't have a signal to build more bone mass, you can take everything in the world. Your body doesn't care. It doesn't yeah. want to build. But you'll look at like osteopenia drugs or osteoporosis drugs, right? Fosamax or other. And they're, and these are drugs that actually hammer the immune system. I had I talk about this client often because it was so profound. But I used to train this woman. She was a professor. Loved training her. Wonderful woman. And she came to me because she couldn't figure out how to reverse. She had this slow declining of bone mass. And she walked daily. She did hikes. She was active. She ate very healthy. She was a very petite woman. And she was like borderline osteoporosis. The doctors put her on, I think it was Fosamax that she took. I believe that's the one where you go, it's like once in a while. It's like there's a huge gap between the times that you get the shot. And then she would feel like dog shit for three or four days afterwards because it hammers your body. And it barely made a dent in this slow progression. She was teaching a class one time, having a conversation with her students. One of her students happened to be a trainer that worked for me back in the day. Says, hey, go see Sal. He's got a studio. She came to him, hired me. And we did, the, she never lifted weights. We did the most basic resistance training. Very, very basic. In fact, when she first started, it was sit down, stand up off a bench. It was uh, a sumo deadlift with a dumbbell off of a block because she wasn't very strong. It was overhead presses with two pound dumbbells. And it was very, very basic. We just slowly progressed her. 
She went to the doctor, got her annual checkup for her bone density. The doctor was so blown away by what happened. He called me and he made a case study out of her and included my name in the whole thing. And he goes, I've never seen this before. He goes, this is, he goes, not only did it, what the best we could hope for is slowing down the progression. Not only did it stop, it went in the opposite direction. She's actually adding bone. He goes, what the hell are you doing? And I said, we're strength training. We're actually sending a signal to her body to build bone because it's it, strength training doesn't just yeah. strengthen bone; it strengthens it's interconnected. It, yes. the musculoskeletal system; it's all connected. Like so, one tissue affects the other. Totally. And I just think that people don't realize that uh, that's that's integrated into the strength training. Your bones get affected as well. Yes. Now, if this isn't a goal of yours, how important is it that you're in a caloric surplus? Uh, it's relatively important. However. If you're in terms of your bone density will always be positively affected from going from no strength training to strength training. So regardless of your diet, if you go from none to, to doing some, you're going to just like you'll see strength gains anyway. Right. But at a certain point, you probably want to have some excess calories or at least at maintenance. Right. If you're too low on calories, then your body's starting to take away from certain things. But I'll tell you, it's in, in fact, I did a uh, Lane Norton's podcast and we were talking about this. He had his bone density tested and they said, your bones are three times stronger than the average guy your age. We're seeing now osteopenia in women in their 30s. Hmm. We're seeing osteopenia in men. It was never a thing that men had uh, problems with. We're starting to see it in men. Well, society is just so sedentary. Well, yeah, yes. And how much, do, is, how much does declining testosterone play a role in that? It uh, does that play too. a role. It mm. also plays a role. But I'll tell you what, it's a big deal for people listening right now thinking, oh, what's the big deal? When you get older, if you look at when people die as they get older, you know what happens often? They'll Because of they're weak, because they have low muscle, and because their bones get weak, this is quite common, you're in your 70s, you fall, yep. you break your hip, fracture your hip, you die of pneumonia. Or you die of some other, because your body can't, now you're in the hospital, you're in a bed, and forget it, you're so far gone that that month in bed yeah. now. Whatever movement you had before, you can't you can't do movement anymore, no. which then you, it's just a decline, rapid decline. No, that. when they compare other forms of exercise to strength training for bone mass, you know what you see? You see like running, for example, you'll see a little bit of increase in bone mass in the lower extremities or nothing. You'll actually sometimes see a loss of bone mass in the upper extremities. Resistance training or strength training is because it targets the whole body. You see bone mass increases in the spine, in the upper extremities, lower extremities, the neck, the ankles, the hips, like everything. So by far, and you don't need to do a lot of it. If, if you're somebody who's listening and you're older and you have osteopenia, one day a week. One day a week of strength training, and you should see a positive effect on bone mass. And this is the thing. Like, this is why, yes, walking is great. Yes, being active is great. But also, you got to consider these things, too, as you age. So you got to take care of your body. Your bones are an integral part to everything else. So resistance training needs to be a part of your routine. Totally. Next question is from Paula Angela. How can I better maintain a tight core for a whole set when doing bent over movements? Oh, Adam knows this. He does a lot of bent over <laughs> tight core. Oh, that's, that's, he loves sorry. To all the exercises. Go with this right sorry, now. sorry. <laughs> wow. I'm sorry. I had to throw that in there. Yeah. No, you know what? The, you know what's uh, important about this is the, you might think, why would you need your core to be tight when you're bent over? Because the stabilization is coming from your low back. But what happens often to some, for some people is they overarch yeah. and they start to get this shearing pain in the low back. The bracing the other side of the core stabilizes the whole thing. It's like wearing a weight belt. So what I used to tell my client, because naturally sometimes what happens, especially if you're not connected to your core, you'll do a bent over barbell row and you'll feel your belly hang. Yeah. And then you're just feeling a low back. Here's what you got. This is an easy one. I used to go up to my clients and I would poke them in the stomach yeah. and it's mm -hmm. a brace like you're, like, you're, like you're just trying to pr avoid getting poked or tickled or whatever. That's all. Yeah. Just brace your core. Yeah, and this is one of those things where you start getting into the movement and mechanics of an exercise and you just forget one of the parts. Like, so That's initially right. you might have that bracing effect, but then you start getting into the movement. Now I'm concentrating what my arms are doing. Yeah. I'm trying to really hone in on bringing my shoulders back and getting all that in check. And then you just, it, it, it's just inevitable. Some Sometimes like you just forget how important and vital it is to keep bracing that entire time you have to stay in that that tension uh to be able to protect your back so uh, you know just to just slow down is, is a big part of that is to to kind of bring the tempo down really like 
hone in on that, yep. especially if you're getting that signal that there's a pain there that you're uh, you're getting from your back. So I, I know we, uh, we we rag on each other about how bad of trainers we were when we first started. Yeah. And I was a bad trainer when I first started. One of the things, though, I thought I did pretty well was I, I learned the core was like the first thing I learned as a trainer. And I was like so fascinated. Like up until that point, I had no idea. I used your pitch like a million times. Yeah, right. With, so, with the pencil. Yes, right. That was <laughs> yeah. seriously like that was that was my sales pitch. Here, that, here's the pencil. Yeah. yeah now here's the tight core. Yeah. Right. And I, I was fascinated with it. I was fascinated with it. And I remember telling people, you know, the most important muscle in your entire body besides your heart is your core. Yeah. And we, of course, without your heart, you're dead. We know that. But your core is the next. You got to right? memorize that. Oh, yeah. No, I used to go. And like Justin said, I had this whole pencil thing that I used to do and everything. Uh, this is actually where I love doing like stability type stuff because it's really hard to stabilize on one leg in balance without having to activate the core and stabilize the spine. Yeah. So if I have a client that struggles with keeping their core activated while they do bent over exercises, I might do a lot of single leg or stability type challenging movements. Physio balls. Good yeah. That's for right. So I get them to focus on that. We also had a question on a, on a live quad just recently um, and that we were talking to this girl. I forgot her condition that she had. It was very foreign to me. I've never heard it before. But the one that the the leak in her spine for her. Oh, her yeah. yeah. No, it was a pretty rare thing. Right. It was really rare. But we one of the things that we were trying to tell her was like, you know, a lot of times we don't think about movements as practice. We always think about building muscle or burning body fat and getting the burn and intensity. And I was really big at the very beginning of, of coaching and training on like getting my clients to like just be super meticulous about their form. Mm -hmm. And so instead of being hung up when you're doing a bent over row and exercise about how much weight are you moving and yeah. trying to progress trying that. Trying to get through the reps. That's right. Try and make it look beautiful. If, you're, if your form looks beautiful, I guarantee the, the core is going to be activated because that's part of it. Part of keeping that spine in a very rigid position in a bent over exercise is the core having to activate. So if you look at the exercise as more of a movement and a skill and you challenge yourself to perfect the form mm -hmm. versus trying to always progress weight or reps, this will come along for the ride. So just look at it like that and try and make it. And, as soon, and so what I would do with a client, let's say, and we're doing, let's use a bent over row as an example. And, you know, we're doing the weight in about seventh or eighth rep. I see form break down, even though they could finish all 12 reps, I would reduce the weight and then challenge the ticket. I'd slow the tempo down and they'd be like, oh no, no, I could do it. This isn't too heavy. I'm like, no, no, your form is breaking down. It's not perfect. Mm -hmm. I want it to look perfect all the way through 12 reps. So just challenge yourself that way. You know, I, I, I tricked my daughter into uh, working on her core because I was trying to get them to exercise. It's a big pain in the ass, right? So I said, I'll tell you what, if you can sit on the physio ball without your feet touching the floor for one minute, I'll give you $5. So she's sitting on there with her legs trying to whatever. And it took a while for her to get it down. But then when she was done, I gave her five bucks. And then she goes, did you just trick me into working my core? Because I feel <laughs> and I said, I definitely did. Well, that's where yeah. the, uh, you know, one of our videos that's gone viral is the the split stance bicep curl yeah. video that I teach. And there, of course, I get a lot of shit from, there's a lot of guys on there. It that doesn't are, maximize your bicep oh, activation. Yeah, they're that's talking. That's not the point, dude. Yeah, the point for that movement was I was, I, I always had a hard time teaching some clients to, to keep their elbows in position and to stand up with good posture. And I realized when I made them balance on one foot, they would have to. You would, and if you ever do this one time, you know, stand on one leg and balance. You'll notice in order to stabilize and balance, you stack the joints real nicely, and the core you'll just slight. You'll feel it. And I would do that. I'd say balance on one leg, and then I'd say, Do you feel your stomach right now? Do you feel how you have slightly drawn in? You've just activated your core, your car. Your, and then I'd go on the spiel. Justin's talking about with the pencil. Yep. Say it's five thirty sessions. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. <laughs> Next question is from Shap Monk Seven. What can I do to build confidence in the gym and not be intimidated by people lifting heavy weights? Okay, so I'm going to let people in on a little secret here. And it's a secret only to people who have not worked in gyms or worked out in gyms consistently for a little while. Mm. Now, there's definitely those assholes that are in the weight room that hog the weights and that are totally have bad manners and all that stuff. But here's the truth. It is a tiny actually rare minority. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, the people in the gym, and I remember learning this as a kid, the people in the gym that are that will lend you a hand, that will give you the most respect, when you're try, especially when you're new, that'll give you the most respect when you first start working out, are the dudes in the gym squatting five plates, deadlifting all the weight or whatever. They, they typically are- They look intimidating. They do. <laughs> yeah. They look intimidating, yeah. but you get so much respect. I, you remember going to a world gym as a kid- Skinny kid, not know whatever. And I went in there to work out, and I felt 
a little bit of intimidation. I was excited too. Don't get me wrong. I loved it, right? But I remember going in there being like, oh my God. And I remember dudes coming up to me, guys that were just beasts. And they go, hey, good job, kid. Hey, let me show you how to do this. And then I got like, oh, let me ask this guy for help. Hey, can I ju jump in? Gym etiquette is there's like this moral code in the gym. And the people that know it the most are the ones that are the most consistent. So and I'm saying that because we have this image in our head of the big, you know, veiny guy working out with his headphones and he's not looking at anybody and he looks mean. He's super intense and focused on his workout. But I guarantee you, he's going to be one of the more respectful yeah. people uh, of you I when totally you're I totally agree, out. but also it's a culture thing. So if you're at a gym where there's guys that are just there to get attention from girls. Like a zoo culture type of thing? Is that what you're alluding to, Justin? Naming it completely, <laughs> yes. Let's go ahead and throw some shade there. Um, that's a different situation. Yeah. But find yourself a gym where people are serious about what they're doing and the big guys are the ones that look like it's super intimidating, like you said, are some of the most nice uh, people that you're going to find that will really, they're just there to help you out, to, to, to give you whatever knowledge that they have. They actually love it when you ask them questions. Yes. So I would go in there with a humble attitude, not like you're taking over and like you got everything together. It'll just go in there, humble attitude, ask questions. And I guarantee they're going to go out of their way to help you. Strength gyms. If strength you go, gyms, yeah, you go yeah. to strength gyms where you see yeah. like strong man, power lifters, not as the famous gyms. You'll, then you'll see, <laughs> you'll, you'll run into a lot of those, of those kind of people. Well, on the, on the other side of fear resides success, right? So, uh, you know, face your fear. I mean, if you're, if you're intimidated and you're scared of it, one of the best things you can do is to face it and get out there and do it. Not to mention if there was ever a time that I stopped to help somebody, out it was the person that i saw that was looked intimidated and looked scared and looked nervous and they were trying to deadlift yeah. or squat or they're or they're referring to their maps program and they're trying to figure it out and watch a video like i see somebody doing that if there ever is a time that i go over and, and interrupt their workout to give them some tips it's that person like it, it's not the, the cocky kid who's doing something and thinks he knows what he's doing even if he's got bad form i ain't wasting my time i don't have i don't no. i don't want to go in there's that. an ego wall that's there, right i don't even like, want but if i on. but if you're some you know, some old lady who's trying to learn how to deadlift or somebody who just they you can see this person too by the way so if you think you're this person i can tell who you are when you're in the gym mm -hmm. working out and so can those crazy lifters that sal's talking about that look really intimidating and normally when you see someone like that those are the people that you walk over and I, you're friendly to i've seen numerous times douchebags and the douchebags are always this by the way it's some high school kid or college kid that just started yeah. working out they make a lot of noise intentionally he's working out with his friends and they're being douchey those are the guys that i could see that that do this i've seen them get checked at least a dozen times mm -hmm. by the actual big strong lifters in the gym yeah. I, i've seen it happen many times i remember one time this yeah. woman like pick up your weights yeah the, yes i yeah. saw this woman one time waiting for a piece of equipment and there was these three dudes that were just in between sets bullshit and whatever and this jack guy who was squatting in the in the corner with his headphones takes his headphones off walks over to the guys and said you guys are done here and i remember they're like we are done sorry <laughs> sir and okay. just to let her work out this is the culture in these gyms. Yeah. The people in the gyms that by and also most people also don't notice. Those are the people that notice because they've been there for a while and other people are just focused on themselves. So nobody's like staring at you and watching you like you think. But I'll tell you what, the two people that get the most respect, well, there's a few people that get tons of respect in the weight room. It's the old people lifting weights, tons of respect. They're like they're like gods in there. Mm -hmm. It's the really strong strength athletes that have great technique. They get yeah. tons and tons of respect. Anybody that has really good form stands out. Yes. And then yeah. it's the beginner. Yeah. Beginner walks into the weight room. I swear to God, you see all the veterans and everybody knows what they're doing. And you can tell they're all like, okay. If they do notice, because oftentimes they're in their own zone, they're like, all right, good job. And they want to encourage you, you know? Yeah, Justin brings up a good point, though. I do, I agree with you. Like, And I know I was just, I was throwing a jab or throwing shade on, on zoo culture. I'm sure there's actually a lot of, like, really, really great people that work out there. Um, but if you do go to a place that's uh, full of a bunch of teenage boys that are just learning how to lift themselves, it's, you're, a, it's a meat market. Yeah, it's you're more likely to run into a situation like that. And this is where it also it's worth spending a little money on a gym that you that yes. you, you're not going to run into this. Like Definitely. you know, spend it. You're I, you're not going to see this at like a a, a a racket club. You know, mm -hmm. like one of, like one of those spa type of gyms, yeah. like a club sport or whatever like that. You're not going to run Equinox into Equinox. Yeah, you're not going to run into that type of stuff at, at a place like Usually that. Usually, it's the bargain gyms that you might run that's into right some of stuff. yeah you're gonna run in um, you know 24-hour fitness or these cheaper membership also type the gyms. time that you go 
you'll see a difference. If you That's go right. early in the morning, early in the morning is the best time to go. Yeah. The best time early in the morning, you're going to run into yeah. some of the best. Five uh, o'clock is. Uh, yeah, it's, it's the best culture, I yeah. would say, uh, that's in the gym. That's how I ran uh, my gyms. Yeah. But here's the other part, right? The more you practice something, the less scary it becomes. And then there's this, and this is very important. Stop giving too many fucks about what other people think. Uh, Damn, thank you. Yeah, yeah. You, yes. just you're there for you. You're not there for anybody else. Go in there, do your thing, and don't be so self-conscious. I know it sounds easy. It's easier said than done. But just literally tell yourself, I'm here for me. I don't give a shit about anybody else. I'm here for me, and if I don't know something, I'm going to ask somebody so that I can learn because this is for me. It's very important to have that attitude when you're working out because it's going to carry you to through your whole career of training your body. If you work out and you constantly care about what other people think, it's going to push you and drive you in the wrong direction. At some point, you're going to have to get over that, especially if you plan on doing this for years and years and years. You'll have to get to the point where you just don't care. I don't give a shit what anybody else thinks. Yeah, yeah. Especially, look, even if you're a veteran, you know how many times I've worked out and I think, oh man, I got to go real light. Uh, well, I, I should probably add more weight. You know, at some point, I don't give a fuck. This is for me. So yeah. if well, I'm working out with 135, I don't care. And back to like the last question, focus on form and technique. Yeah. Nothing is more impressive than beautiful form. I ne I'm not, in there's a lot of people that are naturally strong. There's a lot of pe people that can come out and squat and deadlift just naturally because they were, yeah. they genetically have got that. But it takes years of practice to yeah. have meticulous form. Focus on that. Get really, really good at form and technique. Perfect. There you go. Look, if you like our content, you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com. Go check out all the free stuff that we give our listeners. Lots of valuable free things you can find, again, at mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at mindpumpjustin, me at mindpumpsalon, Adam at mindpumpadam. Are there some generic parameters as far as what you would tell them to you know, stay your saturated fat under this or th it should be only this you person? Know, it really doesn't even matter. So here's the other thing. If you're in a calorie deficit and you're losing weight, everything else makes no difference. Like all your cardiovascular risk factors that we can measure go down. Like they've done studies where people are in a 